Good morning, everybody. I am Laz filling in for Scott, the Red Dog Redler, who is out today on his way to Boston to participate in the Boston Marathon. So, Mr. Redler, we are thinking of you and wish you lots of luck in that uh, crazy race. Uh, let's hop right into it here. Let's let's uh, on this Friday morning. You know, usually we do a little bit more of a casual morning call. Um, so let's take a random walk around Wall Street. Let's gather some thoughts, ideas, opinions, um, and look at some data so that we could potentially uh, come up with some tradable decision-making process and or ideas for today, possibly into next week as well. So let's hop right into it. Let's look at the S&Ps here. We'll look at the broader indexes. Um, and you can see here um, on the S&Ps, uh, the one thing I would say here is that, you know, these moving averages have been pretty much a railroad track up. Uh, a nice trending type of move here um, that, that a lot of traders like to see. Make it a little tighter. Um, and, uh, you know, something has changed over the last couple of days, over the last few, you know, five, six trading sessions. We saw some selling. Uh, we, have, we have snapped back uh, as of the last two trading sessions. But our MAs here have crossed now and are, and are turned down. So that's a signal to us as a trader that, that something has changed. We haven't seen that type of action since um, back late in uh, December, believe it or not. So we've been in this four month, you know, four month plus rally. Uh, finally, some cracks in the armor. Uh, the market showing signs that something is changing. Uh, the movement of price is what we study as technicians. And that price is, you know, telling us that the story possibly is changing here. Uh, so we saw a uh, fairly substantial pullback, about five, six days of selling, uh, two days of a snapback um, into these averages now, which will probably pose uh, some resistance. If we look at some retracements from highs to lows, you know, we're probably right around that 50% mark, plus or minus a little. Um, and you can see that 50% retracement. Uh, basically, you know, yesterday's highs, like I said, plus or minus just a little. Um, so we've, we've now recaptured about half of that, you know, five or six day sell off. And this is an area where, you know, technicians, active traders are probably going to look to see if, you know, if this is going to resume in this, 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 this down move, uh, which did take out prior support, you know, it did take out some prior pivots down here. Um, if it's going to go lower and this is going to continue, it's probably going to give you maybe a one day pause in here. And then possibly next week, you know, we could see some resumption. Uh, which would be, you know, technically not too surprising. Usually you get, you know, A, B, C pullbacks, A down, B up, and then, you know, C down. So we could be, you know, more downside could be in the cards today into possibly uh, next week. So I think traders need to be prepared and ready for that. Um, but again, it will depend on sort of this bounce that we've seen over the last two days. Does it really sort of lose its, its, its upside ground here and, and you know, how, the, uh, how price reacts today. So I think today could be a really pivotal day for what to expect and anticipate uh, next week. If we continue and we just, you know, snap all the way back, you know, obviously all those bets are off and we'll have to re readjust and, and, and reevaluate. Let's take a look at some symbols. Really, uh, you know, where are the eyeballs? Where's the action? We saw earnings season kick off with Alcoa the other day. Uh, so as we get, you know, over the next couple of weeks, as we get into the thick of it and, and you know, some symbols start reporting each and every day, you're going to see a lot of individual stock trades develop. Doesn't necessarily mean that the market's going to move with those, you know, names, but you could see stocks and sectors have, you know, large potential moves over the next few weeks. So you got to be prepared and, and you got to be uh, ready for, for those, you know, earnings reports. Last night we saw Google, we'll take a look here. Uh, Google, um, you know, announced good earnings. I think they beat and they announced some form of a stock split. Um, the stock really didn't react much. We saw a run into earnings. You saw, you know, a one or two day pop here um, that, that got back most of that, you know, very controlled downdraft that we saw here over the last week and a half. Um, not really doing much pre-market. I think it was up maybe a buck or two. Um, post earnings, which is very, 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 uh, very, very rare for Google. As I, you know, watch this stock trade over the last, you know, I don't even know how many years, seven, eight, nine years, um, every earnings announcement has usually given us some sort of large breakaway move, 5%, 10% to the upside or the downside. And if you go back in time, you'll see some of those prior, uh, you know, earnings gaps. We can look at a weekly here. Um, uh, it doesn't really show. Let's go look at a daily. You can see these large breakaway gaps. You know, generally most of the time they're from earnings, um, which is very typical of, of Google. It's been, you know, a very 
earnings driven type of trade and and these breakaway gaps have defined uh, this stock for the better part of you know years um, and traders almost anticipate Google having some large you know move post earnings not seeing it this time very very interesting you know a little piece of information what it means you know I guess we'll, we'll know with more time um, if we look at uh, again our higher time frames our weekly charts the one thing uh, that, that I've that I've pointed out yesterday on the VTF and Google was you have this upper band here um, and it's it's this is again a weekly time frame uh, looking back the last four years of trading it's made subtle new highs you know you can see these highs subtly take each other out you know we, we get these new highs and then every time we get that subtle new high you know you get this sharp down move um, you know so I'd be very careful with Google as it's into this upper band of resistance here uh, obviously, a, a, a you know a strong breakout of this you know upper band would probably warrant you know possibly you know new highs our, our all time highs back up here around 750. Um, so we're stones throw away from those prior highs, but again we do have to contend with uh, this upper band here, which the stock is sitting at today. So be very careful um, and be very nimble in this area within Google. Uh, I think you got to wait for a good setup here, and I, I just don't think it's there right now. Um, but we will watch it today, intraday, for clues about, you know, a possible trade uh, post-earnings. Uh, Apple, <clears throat> you know, our staple stock, um, stock that's made a lot of traders a lot of money over the last couple of years. Uh, you know, a little bit of, you know, some, some kinks in the armor. Um, three days of selling. You know, the market had two big, you know, had, had two big up days, especially yesterday. And the stock really, you know, underperformed uh, relative weakness there closing on the on the lows of the day saw early morning pop but that pop you know sold off for the better part of the day uh, I, I anticipate the stock to go lower here potentially uh, first line of support would probably be the 21 day EMA that's right around 607 possibly into the low 600s I think uh, you have some short-term support we'll look at a 60 minute here just to get a you know a clearer look here um, you know so down here uh, you, you have this lower band of support uh, Right around, you know, like I said, the low 600 area possibly could act as, you know, uh, if we take out this prior pivot here at 618, which I think is what this price is, right around, yeah, 618.80, uh, you have pretty much a pocket of air here, a void. We call these tradable voids. Back to support, which will come in probably in that lower 600 area. And, you know, like all high beta stocks, it'll probably stretch through there. Um, so we are on the lookout here. The 60-minute chart, as you can see from our MAs, uh, bearish uh, has, has turned down. So be on the lookout for some further downside here in Apple, as I do think that possibly is in the cards today and even into, into Monday. Um, through 618.80 probably would be you know, a, a more confirming indicator uh, of, a, of another trade there. So keep, keep that one on the radar. CMG, uh, Chipotle, again, another high flyer, high beta momentum stock. Really just an amazing looking chart here from December, uh, this December move through April, held intact. Yesterday, new highs again. So uh, CMG could run here. Again, this is a very bullish looking structure. You know, multi-week base here for you know, about two weeks and change and then seeing new highs yesterday. So keep CMG on the long side. Uh, Priceline, another high flyer, a lot of eyeballs here. Um, interesting looking chart. And we're going to look bigger picture. Um, I like to look bigger picture. It just creates... Um, a very good working, um, you know, idea of where the stock is, has come from, where it is, and 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 how to potentially uh, let me fix this chart here. How to potentially trade it. Um, one of the MAs that I, uh, sorry, one of the retracement levels that I like to look at is the 786, which is the 78.6 percent retracement. Um, for those of you that are familiar with the Active Trader class, you'll know why. Uh, but this is basically. All time, you know, the all time highs uh, from when it IPO'd back at a thousand bucks to the lows made in uh, 2001, right around six dollars. Um, so, this is, you know, just a sort of like I said, a broad stroke. That's 786 right here. We hit it, you know, three days ago, which is right around 775, you know, somewhere between that 770, 780 level, and turned down hard. Uh, there was about a, um, you know, I'd say a, probably a $40, $50 move in, in two days um, pretty aggressively. So keep your eye on how this snaps back and how this contracts down here. 
Losing support of this eight period, you can see this on the daily, the blue lines, the eight, has really act, acted as a, as a benchmark line of support over the last few months as, it's, as this stock has rallied $300. Uh, losing support here, so you know some cracks in the armor, and this could be uh, setting up for some further downside in the days ahead. You know, if this doesn't fit into your risk parameters, obviously price line's a high flyer, high beta, you know, high risk symbol, but uh, technically, you know, there could be some more downside to come. Uh, another high beta stock that I think needs to be on the long radar is uh, Intuitive Surgical ISRG. Just a really, again, very much like, like Chipotle, um, you know, a nice two-week base here. Averages are still strong, new highs yesterday. So keep your eyes on ISRG for uh, some more follow-through. And, and the last one is, is Baidu. Uh, Baidu <clears throat> has built a nice area of support down here around 143, 144. Um, we saw some selling with the market two days ago, came right back to that level. Support held, and now we're back, you know, to, to what was, you know, that breakdown level. So keep your eyes on Baidu as it's acting, starting to act better, and this one could be a breakout candidate uh, going forward. It looks like it wants higher, especially after yesterday's reversal. Um, and the last one I know, Scott, you know, we've had in uh, off the charts at night is Caesars. Uh, it's a trade that Scott's talked about in other morning calls and, and the off the charts newsletter. Caesars starting to base, again, a new issue. Um, you know, saw that big IPO. Came all the way back, you know, now back and starting to base here. Averages underneath it has good support. Uh, through highs, you could see, you know, a breakout into some of these tails. Could see a trade back to that $17 mark in the short term. So for those of you that are more, you know, shorter term, keep your eye on that one uh, as well. J.P. Morgan earnings. Um, J.P. Morgan saw some selling, two-day snapback. Really no, you know, earnings didn't really produce much of a pre-market trade. There really isn't much of a, a gap up or gap down here. So... Um, keep your eyes on JP Morgan as the banks, you know, there's, there's really been some underlying weakness in the banks. Goldman saw some selling uh, with the market. Again, two days of snapback. Now we're into these averages, which are now flat to down. So this will really be the test for these banks. Okay, well, you know, are we going to push back and, and, and continue this rally? Or are we going to, you know, sort of fizzle out here and potentially probe uh, lower? Some other stocks that I've been watching that, you know, showing some sort of, you know, weakness is, you know, Caterpillar for one. Um, China GDP came out this morning. Stocks gapped in. I think the stock's down a buck already pre-market. Um, but Caterpillar, you know, Baker Hughes, um, really, really weak uh, and have been weak and have underperformed significantly um, for a while. So, you know, some stocks that are out there, there really is a, a, a lot of diversity in this market. You can, you know, make money short. You can make money long. Um, it really is a is a symbol specific trade right now. If you're trading, you know, high beta, you know, high flyers, obviously the money's long. If you're trading, you know, um, material stocks and some transports, there's been, you know, it's been more of a mixed bag, and, and there's been some selling there. Um, you know, so that being said, it's you got to pick and choose your battles wisely right now. Uh, the S and P's are an area where we said, you know, we could have another turn down. We could see some follow through to last week's selling, um, or we could base here in this rally could continue more, you know, more time, more data. Uh, you know, we'll be able to get a much closer look at at what we, uh, you know, where the path of least resistance is right now. Um, again, but keep an eye on Apple. I think Apple is one of those ones that could provide us clues. If Apple doesn't really participate, you know, in this market snapback, that could set up a, you know, sort of this high beta sell off type of trade. Uh, that I know a lot of traders have been talking about and watching um, over the last couple of weeks. So with that, have a great Friday. Have a great weekend. Uh, I will most likely be back Monday morning, depending on uh, Scott's physical condition from that grueling race. Again, good luck, Scott. Um, we're all rooting for you. And I will talk to you shortly on the VTF. Have a great day, everybody. Hi, I'm Sean Hendelman, CEO of T3 Live, where we train, coach, and mentor traders in order to help you put your money to work with confidence. The T3 Live approach is a blueprint for you to recognize, adapt, and ultimately take advantage of different market conditions. To begin your training with T3 Live, we would like to offer you the opportunity to enroll in our free 30-day online home study course. Fill in your name and email address, and I'll see you on the other side.